Hi, everybody. This is David Skrika. So um, in, in this video, we're going to talk about like my philosophy towards investing, um, how I made money in the markets in the last little while and how I expect to make money uh, going forward here. And as you know, I've been warning about a bear market, um, you know, recently uh, for the last two years, recently guys um, really esteemed investors like um, uh, uh, Carl Icahn, and Stanley Drunken Miller used to be one of Soros' head traders, have like said the similar kind of thoughts. And um, actually it was reported today that Icon is net 150% short in his um, in his holding company. So anyhow, these so these guys are he's obviously putting his money where his mouth is. And just so you know, Icon, when he first began to warn about the market last year, he was four percent net long. So this is a big strategic shift for him okay so anyhow i i look at this here and um i re i really think we are you know still topping out we've gone nowhere now in two years S essentially since early 2014 the market has gone between 1800 and 2100 on the s p and as i've shown in my newsletter and to you this usually ends up back to the downside but for this time i want to show you how you can actually make money in stocks and markets, and, and how I've been able to make money, even as you know, the, mar the market itself, the stock market in the United States, S and P, is very expensive. Um, what you essentially do is I look for beaten up assets. This is a great study by uh, Mabane Faber, no relation to Mark Faber, but what this is about is this study basically shows what happens when you buy an asset that is down 80, 90 percent from its high and it shows that when you buy a sector that's down that the average three-year return is 172 percent or 240 percent when it's down 90 percent and when a country is down like this the average three-year return is 118 percent or 156 percent and um this is kind of what i do i look for really beaten up kind of assets one of the perfect examples of what this happened with that i made money on was if we go look at back to greece a few years ago um, here we go. Sorry, these are kind of the things that happen when you're doing live presentations. But anyhow, we can see Greece was down to 470. Actually broke that low. But if we look back, but you know, had this huge rally where it almost tri where it tripled in the meantime. But if we go look back to 2007 is that um, it was almost 5,000. Um, actually, 5,300 was its top in the Greek market. It went down to 470, over 90%. And then you can see when it was down over 90%, you know, um, your your return was was really, really good the next three years. Even if you'd been early and bought when Greece was down 80%, you still would have made 30 or 40%. Of course, you could have averaged in. So one of the stocks I bought was HL Toy, Hellenic Telecom, which is the telecom company in Greece, because, you know, uh, phones are, are things that people still continue to use, even in a downturn in the economy. And we bought this at about a dollar forty, and it went almost to nine dollars. We sold basically in about the seven to eight dollar range. And um, you you can see this is a uh, this is kind of what you do when you buy maximum pessimism. Uh, so basically, when I'm looking to these stocks too, I want like like companies like this, like again, telecom company, everybody using their phones, even in a in a bad economy. So this is the kind of thing. I, I like to see and I like to buy and telecom companies are, are great ways to play it because they usually have high dividends they usually have high debt so they're taken down uh, more than the market in the decline but because they are a little more leveraged in the, in the, in the ensuing rebound they usually do better actually Tio the Argentinian uh, telecom company um, this went to, from $20 to under a dollar back to $20 after Argentina had its currency crisis in 2001. And it just shows you that if you get one or two trades like this, you can basically live off that the rest of your life. So um, this is the kind of thing I really hope for. So another one that I, 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 I bought um, was Tata Motors during the financial crisis uh, went from $19 to 280 I bought this at about $350. And, and what happened was Tata um tata you know had taken over jan the jaguar and land rover became leveraged took on debt to do that takeover so people were really surviving my opinion was a that the government would give them a bailout b now they had these fantastic new well-known world recognized names and then c they also have small cars of their own that they sell in india so this was a fantastic turnaround play and and i was very bullish at the time on the indian economy uh, you know india doesn't have the huge amount 
of private debt at the corporate or personal level like we have here in the West. India is still a quick, fast growing economy, now growing faster than China. So you know, what we did is we sold this on the way up. My last sale was probably in the $40 range in 2014 and now we're out of it but again this is kind of maximum pessimism you got a stock falling 90 percent and then i look for something that has a catalyst or something that's got a solid business like um like uh you know like 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 a telecom company like a large automaker something that you know is still going to be around even when it the market turns you know the problem with something that's in a fad industry like say solar city right now this is the kind of company that you know as we've seen with san edison um, this is the kind of company that can basically go bankrupt very, very easily um, because it, it's in a, a business with tons of competition and, um, and not just from solar, but other energy sources, of course, and the amount of debt these companies have um, of taken on in, in an industry that isn't as stable as these other ones. So, so what I did to get good gains in the last year was when I saw that in February, the gold stocks were beginning to turn higher. I was looking for the companies that have large exploration properties or one or two producing mines. I know from my experience, these are the companies that are leveraged to the upside. So Bellow Sun was actually one I'd owned for a while, but I really added to this heavily in the 30 cent range. My average price, I think, is around 25. But I averaged heavily then when it looked like it was about to take an over. You can see it went to a dollar. We've taken some profits out here or stolen some. But, you know, you can see this is what happened. And, and look at these gains. The stock went down as low as almost 10 cents in late 2014. But, you know, you could and realistically, in the last almost two years, you could have bought this stock at 20 cents or so and made over four times on your money. Another smaller miner that I um, purchased, and this is one that has a big exploration property. It's a high cost producer. But again, the high cost tends to be leveraged when the price of gold will go higher. Just give me a second here. One second. Um, I'll show you that in a second. We'll go back and do that right now. I don't know why that isn't loading up, but welcome to the fun of, um, you know, live, uh, doing live videos. Anyhow, um, you can see Tower Hill Mine, same thing. I bought this in about the 30 cents range. The stock has more than doubled um, from, from uh, actually, my 30 cents range was actually um, the Canadian price. So I bought, yeah, yeah, I bought this, you know, in, in the, you know, I bought 40 cents Canadian, Never mind. So yeah, in the 30 cent range and we can see it's doubled in price. It's just then, and it took off right after I bought it here. So these, and again, from my experience, these are the companies that have leverage. These are the companies that in a gold bull market, like happened in the 2000s, like happened from 2008 to 2011, these smaller companies with one large exploration company or a couple small mines, they're the ones that have the leverage because um, usually they're higher cost producers, A, and B, um, they can add ounces in the ground easier. And remember, you have more ounces in the ground when gold's at 1,500 because all the stuff, all of, sudden, all of a sudden the stuff that wasn't profitable at 1,000 now becomes profitable at 1,500 and that expands the resource and adds to the value of the company. So that my next move is I think that these smaller cap junior type companies that are drilling the gold is where the next flow of money will go to. So sure, we are in a seasonal week period for gold. Gold continued to pull back into June. But now what I'm doing is I've taken some profits in companies like Tower Hill and Bellow Sun, which I've shown, and we're moving these proceeds into these smaller cap companies that really hasn't moved one yet. Like I got one, it's a five cent stock on my list right now, but this is a company in Africa, has a producing mine, and I think can really do fabulously as gold continues to move higher. So this is kind of what we look at. This is how I do things on the long side. Beaten up industries, companies that are going to survive, and history shows us that when something's down 80 or 90%, you're gonna get returns of 100, 200, 300% on whole in that industry or sector or country, but obviously if you get into the good stocks in that turnaround, it can go up 1,000%. Um, the class, you know, in, in those industries. Um, if you go look at many of the um, um, uh, uh, casino stocks in 2009, these companies went down, some of them 99%, and then some of them went up 
two, three, four thousand percent in the following five years, which followed. So, you know, that's kind of where we are um, um, right now. OK, so um, and, and that's where I think we are, where we are right now. Um, and I am in that. So um, I mean, I'm in the gold stocks. That's where I think we are right now that some of these companies can do that. OK, so how do you short stocks? What I look for is companies that have heavy debt loads um, or are in um, industries with increasing competition that can really get tanked in the downside. Like one of our shorts has been Solar City, which we shorted on a spike it had last year to the mid 50s. And now you see, it looks like it's going to break down. I think this company actually will go bankrupt. Um, that's my personal opinion. Um, and anyhow, but, but again, Solar City, huge debt load. Um, as Jim Shano says, Really, their model of installing solar panels, and you're almost like leasing them from them. It's almost like a subprime lending model in solar panels, rather than being an out-and-out -out solar uh, um, uh, a company. Okay, and they lose huge amounts of money. They never made a penny, and you know they just had a terrible earnings today. So that's kind of what it looked like here. Something, and it's got tons of competition. You know, there's First Solar, there was Sun Edison before it went down. You know, there's there's tons of competition out there, and of course on the other side in the short term with natural gas prices so low and commodity prices so low, you know, and even there's still quite a bit of coal production out there. Um, these prices are all so low that um, 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 these prices are all so low that these companies, you know, it's the, 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 um, the inclination to go to solar just isn't there, you know. So anyhow, so I'll give you a class example of how I think on the shorts and I'll give you a current short. So I will give you, and as a disclosure, yeah, I own put options on this company, is, is Sirius Satellite Radio. And see, Sirius is in an industry that's kind of fading. They're getting competition from Spotify, Pandora, these companies where you can stream music. Even Apple has a streaming service right now. Um, and with the streaming services, you can listen to whatever you want, when you want, right? And then so they, and obviously they have the classic competition from, <laughs> you know, terrestrial radio, right? And... Um, um, so Sirius, you know, has this competition and, and then, so, and, and you go into an office right now, no one has Sirius radio for the most part in their offices. What you see now is most of the Sirius new sales are coming in new cars. 70% of new car sales have a Sirius satellite radio installed in them. Half of those are new. So that basically means 35% of new cars that have sold in the last couple of years have Sirius radios. Well, there is a subprime bubble going on in car lending right now. We're seeing people with FICO scores under 500 getting new, you know, getting loans for fifty thousand dollar cars. So um, uh, when this bubble bursts, like a subprime loan uh, bubble burst in homes, it's going to devastate Sirius because first of all, their new installations will disappear. Second of all, um, current subscribers will disappear because people will then default on their um, on their on their car loans in the next cycle. And then third of all. Even if people try to keep their cars, well, let's say you're desperate and you want to keep your car and you start cutting back on its expenses. Well, one of the main things you're going to cut back on is a $10 or $20 a month Sirius satellite radio. You're going to say, I don't need to waste $100 or $200 on that. You know, I'll, 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 I'll hook up my uh, iPhone and listen to music off it, right? You know, rather than listen to Sirius. Um, um, so that, that's a major, major problem that Sirius is going to have you know, going forward. And then this is a highly indebted com companies. One of the things I really look for in short as well, in shorts, is these, uh, and I'll tell you what they've done recently, but because it, Sirius is so, um, um, oh, I wanted to go back further, sorry. Because Sirius is so uh, uh, leveraged, in the last two bear markets, it went from, Seventy dollars to thirty-nine cents, and then from over nine dollars to five cents. And part of the reason is the debt load, and then part of the reason, yeah, because this is something that people cut back on in a um, recession. So um, right now, what Sirius Radio is doing is they have a two-point-one billion-dollar buyback going, even though the company only makes about four hundred million a year. So put it together, you can't buy back five times what you're making because they, they took on a huge loan to do this. So it becomes leverage. None of the money is going into the business. It's all going into the buyback. And that's just to support the price here. So I think that this will be an excellent short. And if this keeps up, what we'll see with Sirius, it will go back to a penny stock. So I look for companies, like I said, leverage, 
in an industry with lots of competition. This has also got exposure to the subprime auto market, and Sirius has a hus has history of boom and busts. So that's what I think we'll see from this going forward. It's just a question: does it bust this year, next year, etc. You know. So I guess I'm going to leave it at that. And if you like these ideas I've shown, how I buy beat up industries. Um, you know, um, now that I think the gold is re-entered a bull market, how we can trickle down these into the smaller gold companies. And then on the short side, looking for companies that are in industries with lots of competition and that will probably roll over. I, I, I think that my service is something you should look at. So tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, May 11th, we are going to have um, a, a special promotion to the service starting. And I hope that those of you who are watching and uh, get, you decide to give it a try. Thank you very much, and um, I'll talk to you tomorrow.